So the next person we have speaking today is uh, Rhett Warner, a Canadian former professional ice hockey defenseman who played over 700 games with the Buffalo Sabres, Florida Panthers, and the Calgary Flames between 1995 and 2008. He was a member of the Canadian National Junior World Championship team that won the gold medal in 2000, or 1996. Rhett retired in 2009 after missing a full season due to a shoulder injury and briefly remained with the St Flames as a scout before returning to broadcasting. He co-hosts the morning radio show on Calgary Sportsnet 960 Radio, and he was supposed to race the cow at a game, and that didn't happen. Rhett, come on up. <laughs> I didn't race the cow because I got another injury that day. <laughs> Hamstring weakened up, a little sore. Thanks, John. Uh, how about those riders the other day? It was a nice win here at, uh... <laughs> hi, go green. I was going to add some words of encouragement at the end, but my mind was blown by the last uh, couple speakers. I mean, it's amazing the stuff that's going on. I remember sitting in a, uh, a doctor's office in Cleveland in probably 2007. I'll, pr I'll get to it just thinking, do I want this surgery now? Or is there something that's going to come along that's going to be bigger and better? And, and sitting here listening to all of you talk, it, it, we're getting there. That's, uh, that's great. I, good stuff. So uh, back to me, I was voluntold by Donna to get up here and, and do a presentation and kind of add a, uh, a personal side to all the great speakers that uh, have been up here talking. Uh, I was born in a small town in uh, Shaunavon, Saskatchewan, a town of about 400 people. Yeah, it was a big city. And uh, I remember the first day, well, not the first day, one of the first days in, in uh, kindergarten, and uh, the teacher said, who wants to play hockey, raise their hand, and I, well, I play hockey, throw my hand up, it was great, go home, after school I'm walking home, and I'm like, geez, my dad's good, I, I grew up in an old school house where he had to ask permission to do something, and I was pretty sure when I got home, my dad was going to read me out and say, there's absolutely no chance that you're going to be playing hockey, but I was lucky enough to play, uh, I played junior hockey in Saskatoon, I moved on to, uh, to play uh, in the NHL. I was drafted in 1994, and in 95-96, my NHL career began. My notes are all messed up, so I'm going to just go like this <laughs> and tell my story. In 95-96 was my first year in the NHL. Uh, I was traded to Buffalo in 1999, and kind of my story that relates to all of you and what's happening here today started in probably 2001. We were doing, uh, it was training camp, and we were in uh, North Carolina, and we were on a beach, and we were doing a team building event, and it was stupid, but we did it. And we were all inside of a, a roped off kind of a pen, and the pen was about this high, and we had a two by four, about a six foot two by four, and we were all inside this pen, and they said, get out. So they picked me up, and you got to go over the rope. So they picked me up and threw me over the rope. And I put a two, the two by four on my shoulder and kneeled down. And a guy inside the rope did that. And everyone stepped on the two by four and jumped over the rope. And out we went. That night, I went to bed. And I was like, geez, a little achy. Shouldn't be. Didn't do anything else really that day. Didn't sleep well. Woke up the next day, said something to the trainer. Ah, keep going. Not a big deal. Well, I used to sleep like this every night, and I haven't done that since 2001, and uh, it's one of the sad things in my life. I really felt like I got better sleeps back in the day. Continued to play that season, degenerated, driving was hard, sleeping was worse. Uh, really noticed it one game, uh, Scott Stevens, I don't know if everyone remembers him, but I certainly do. Went up against him and was going to have a fight with him, give him a shove, give him a shove, and there's just no strength there, and the fight didn't go well. Another loss for me. <laughs> Anyways, at the end of the year, talking with the doctors about what we're going to do with this, and I don't even know what they diagnosed the, uh, the injury as. I'm, like John, I had the odd concussion, so I forget a lot of stuff. But I was young and dumb, and I just said, hey, you doctors do what you need to do to keep me in the game, and, uh, and I'll go for it. 
they went in and cleaned it out, and uh, I, I know there's a name for the surgery, but they removed a bunch of the cartilage, and they put holes in there and to cause the blood bleeding and blah, blah, blah. Sent me home. Speaking to the, uh, the physio th stuff, you would think that in the NHL and, you know, the size of the business that is, that they'd probably have a follow-up uh, rehab or a physio type of thing. Well, I had the surgery and went home a week later, and I never did a thing. It was, there was no follow-up. There was no, hey, you should be trying this. It was a go home and figure it out. So I don't know if my, my physio, if I'd have had physio, if it would have helped things long-term, but things being the way they were, it, it, it just continued to degenerate from, from that point on in 2001. I got traded to Calgary in 03, and we had a pretty nice cup run that year. But my game from that day on the beach in North Carolina really fell apart. I wasn't able to play the way I wanted to play. Uh, it made me weak. It couldn't play the style of game I needed to play to keep playing. Uh, and when I got here, I was trying all kinds of different things. So the, the obvious stuff like massage and stretching, uh, ART stuff. Uh, I tried Synvisc injections to keep it lubed up and moving. Uh, actually had a, a, a terrible reaction to Synvisc, I think, uh, the one year. Anyways, in 2007, I'm continuing to play, and I'm at practice, and I get the whole arm is just going numb every time I take a, make a pass or take a shot, and it's no fun. I'm not sleeping. Uh, I can hardly drive to the rink. And the trainer says, well, we better go get an x-ray and see the doc. And so we do that, and I show it up, and, and the trainer came with me because I think he was kind of concerned. Like, something doesn't seem right with this guy. <laughs> And I went and saw Dr. Borman here in Calgary, and he did some x-rays, and he goes, you're, you're done. He says, I I'm shocked you're actually playing. You have a, you have a shoulder that's 80 years old. It's, it's gone. Not the prognosis I was hoping to hear. I was saying, well, maybe Advil or even a leave, <laughs> and you'll be better. But they asked, the, so you leave there, and you're kind of looking at the trainer, and he's looking at you. It's like, you're, I think I was about 30, 31 years old, and now retirement's on the horizon. horizon. And uh, the Flames, they asked me to keep playing. They didn't want to have to make a trade to pick someone up because they wanted to do a surgery, but keep playing before uh, someone else finds out about the injury so that they can get a better trade. So I kept playing. <laughs> Again, the concussion's not real bright. <laughs> so I'm playing, in the, uh, and it was a bicep tendon, apparently, and it just popped and it was gone and actually it was, it was quite a relief because that zinging that was going down my arm went away and it actually made it a lot better, so, uh, for a while. So I continued to play for another year or two and then in 2008, 2009, I, still I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't any good at what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, tried to play a different style than I could and really the writing was on the wall. It was, it was time to hang them up Daryl Sutter made it very clear that it was time to uh, hang him up by saying you're going to the minors or you can retire. So the choice was kind of made. I retired in 2009. I had to do have a, another surgery by Dr. Borman just to kind of clean it out and, and give me a little bit more mobility and movement. Uh, since then, I've had three kids, which is a great highlight. But your interaction with your kid is different. I don't play catch. I played hockey, I can't go out and uh, we live on a lake in Mackenzie Lake. I don't get to go out and play hockey with my kids because if I go shoot pucks, I don't shoot or I don't sleep for the next week. Uh, it's not fun and it's discouraging at times, but coming to something like this has really, uh, has really lifted my spirits. Uh, I've tried everything, uh, PRP, Prolo, uh, ART, like I said, cortisone, all kinds of stuff. I even went and had stem cell injections in it uh, in February thinking, I'm up for anything. I'm still that guy. Uh, I feel like it helped for a while, but it's back to, it's back to square one now. Uh, so here we are. It's, uh, it's been a long road. It's discouraging at times. Like I said, it's tough when your kids want to wrestle and you have to say, oh, daddy's shoulder hurts, when they want to go out and play hockey and you can't do it. Uh, they want to shoot basketball. No, nope, can't. So it's not always easy. It's, it's, it's not always fun. I still wish I could go to bed and sleep with my arms above my head, but 
I think that's over. But uh, I want to say thanks to all of you guys because I remember sitting in that doctor's office and it was pretty humbling when the doctor said we could, he wanted to do a surgery, he was willing to do a surgery, but I was going to be the guinea pig for the surgery. And I said, I don't think I want to be that guy. I'll, uh, I'll retire and move on. Uh, and at the time I said, you know what? Medicine's moving forward. There's too much technology. There's too much good things that are on the horizon. I want to push this off as long as I can until they get to a spot where the surgeries are better, the options are better, and, and I feel like we're getting there. I thank all of you guys for the work that you do. You know, as athletes, we get a lot of accolades. We're not the people that make, uh, we go out there for an hour and we might make you happy and smile and forget about your worries. These guys uh, that do the work over here, they make you forget about it for the rest of your life because they take away the pain and the, and the agony. So the accolades go to all the doctors and the people that are putting this stuff on. I'm sure I had a lot more brilliance in my notes, but probably that's enough. I hope everyone's had a great day. John.